All right, this is Patrick Dean for Seminar Systems and PatrickDeanCoaching.com. Thanks a lot for uh, being here to watch this uh, Facebook Live. Anyway, so what I want to do this afternoon uh, very quickly is I want to address something that I keep getting over and over and over um, in letters, in comments, in conversations with people when I do corporate training. And basically, it sounds like this. Uh, an email sounds like this. Um, uh, meetings are a huge <laughs> waste of time. Meetings are a huge waste of time. They slow everything up. And often meetings cause more problems than they actually solve. So what I'm going to do here in a moment is I'm going to talk about four kinds of people that are sitting around a table in a meeting. And then we're going to talk about solutions to make meetings, whether they're family meetings sitting around your uh, dining room table or whether they're your corporate meetings or your company meetings or whatever to make them more valuable or to create at least a space where you can get stuff done. Now, um, I, I want to jump in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe these, these kinds of people. Then I'm going to talk about the problem and then I'm going to talk about a way we can solve it. So stick with me here because we're going to go through this and I think this can be a very powerful learning process. Uh, for you. This is just comes from absolute experience. So I want to talk about a company that I was a partner in called Clemmer and Associates. And we had plenty of meetings. And as uh, I looked around, what I did, what I noticed was there were basically four different kinds of people sitting at the table. So I'll go over those. So number one was a visionary. Now our visionary person was of course the uh, majority stockholder, the uh, founder of the company, and his name was Brian Clemmer. Clemmer and Clemmer Brian was a visionary. So the first type of person that I want to talk about that's going to be sitting around the table somewhere in your meeting is a visionary. Usually this visionary is a leader of a company, a founder, an entrepreneur, and the visionary is a person that has this energy that about the future, about what can be created. So this uh, this visionary person talks about where the company is going to go, what we're going to do, the clients we're going to reach, how are we going to get out there and expand, what can we add to what we're doing to grow and to make reach even more people and more clients. And the visionary kind of paints a picture of what, what they want to have happen. So Brian was amazing at creating this visionary picture. Now, um, the visionary person has the energy that they can start to paint a picture of where this company is going to go. I'll give you an example of one uh, vision that Brian had that was part of the bigger vision of the company. But what we did was we had these advanced trainings. And what Brian wanted to do was he wanted to go from 125 people in this advanced training to 500 people. And he could paint the picture of 500 people in a room. And uh, that's part of, by the way, that's part of amazing leadership is to be able to paint a picture for people to see. And he was able to do that. He would talk about not only how it affected the company in a financial way, how it affected the people that worked for the company, but how it affected this 500, this increase in number of people, how we could get our message of a world that works for everyone out to 500 people and they would affect more people and they would affect more people. So the idea of going from 125 to 500 people was an amazing vision. So the visionary has the energy to be able to paint the uh, future and to be able to generate excitement and possibility about the future. So remember, visionary. The second person that I want to talk about is called the refiner. The moment that the visionary, that Brian got this message out, there were people, amazing people around the table, who were refiners. And refiners, what they do is they see the detail of what has to happen in this case, the difference between 125 people and 500 people. And a refiner is a person that goes, wow, how, what are we going to need to do to get there? What is, what are the details of that? How many people do we need to enroll every week? How many, how are we going to get these people registered? 
How many chairs? What is it? How do we go to the hotel and get even a bigger room? How do we feed all these people? What buses do we need? What are we going to need to do? And so m- many of you that are listening to this Facebook are refiners in the fact that you see the detail of what needs to happen. So you see what the visionary is, not so much into detail. The visionary paints the picture. The refiner is all about the detail. How, do, how are we going to need to get there? There's a third person around the table. And that person is called the worker. And the worker is the person that's going to jump in with a high level of commitment and competence and skill and get what get done, do the actual work of getting done what needs to happen. Uh, what what the to to bring the visionary's vision into reality? The worker is the person that that wants to jump in and actually do it. And so now you have this third person, so visionary, refiner, and worker. And the worker really uh, is a powerful part of this team. And the worker um, is listening for the clear direction of what they need to do. Now, keep this keep this one in mind, okay? Because we're listening from different places with these people. So what I'm describing here is why meetings often don't work. And after you get, get this idea, after we go through this, um, I think you're going to ha- be able to run, as I said, you're going to be able to run your meetings and create more results when you just realize about the people around the table. So what happens in meetings is this. The refiner runs on energy. The refiner runs on excitement. What they're going to bring into beingness, 500 people or expansion of the company or whatever, you relate it to what you want to create in your family, in your life, in your relationships, in your company. Whatever you want to create, that vision runs first on energy and excitement. When the refiner jumps in and starts talking about the detail, the problem comes up that the that the the purpose the person that's the visionary starts to see the refiner is somebody that's slowing down the process and the excitement. They're bringing all of these challenges up, and the visionary gets frustrated with the refiner because of all the detail. There's a frustration level. And then the refiner needs to talk about this. They know that this stuff needs to be addressed. And they start to get upset with the visionary for not seeing that their vision is going to cause all of this stuff to happen. It's not that the refiner is not committed to have it happen, but they just have that beautiful, detailed mind that's going to take you from where you are now to the completion of the vision by uh, by jumping in and knowing what to by jumping in and knowing the detail to be able to organize the worker the third person now the problem with the worker around the table of course is they roll their eyes they see these meetings as a waste of time because they just want one thing they want clear direction and they want support in completing the job getting it done going out there, delivering the training, doing the things that need to be done as far as all the logistics, doing the stuff that needs to be done if you're doing outdoor events, if you're doing uh, uh, contribution events. They want to get in there and have it and help get it done. They're the workers. And so they have a frustration level about people going back and forth at the meeting and not completing what they need to complete, not giving clear direction that they get into kind of an argument. So the problem with meetings is that we don't see these three different kinds of people, that we see them almost as adversaries or people that are slowing down the process in some way. Once you have that realization, then refiners, you can start to see and keep the energy of a visionary. And once the visionary, you see that you have these amazing refiners and amazing workers, that you can spend the time and have the patience to hear what the challenges are. 
or to give people encouragement, you can do it. You can take it on. I don't need to hear about all everything about it. I just know that you're going to get it done. Now, around every table, <laughs> you might relate to this one, around every table is what's called the critic. Now, this person, this is what I, this person is kind of like what I call the ants at the picnic because the, um, the critic is a person who listens to everything and has a critique of how this or that is not going to work, how this or that is not the right way to go, how this or that, wouldn't it be better if we did this, how this, so it's always about critiquing. And that critic is actually, if you think about it, is the world's easiest job. And why do I say critic is the world's easiest job? Critic is the world's easiest job is because you don't have anything at stake. When you go, when you talk about a movie, now I've been involved with some movies. They filmed one right next door to uh, my house about a year ago. And I watched it and I watched how difficult and incredibly hard it was to produce a movie. And but I can go to the movies and sit through it for an hour and a half, have no investment, and be a critic around how good it is or what the lighting was or how, the, how, the, how it was written or whatever, but I have no investment in it. I'm not, you can't count on me to do, make a movie. You can't count on me to jump in and do any of the work. You can't count on, can't count on me to carry the vision, but I can be a critic. So all of us, at one time or another, we love to be critics because we're not going to be held accountable for the end result. But to have any vision happen, like I said, whether it's your family, whether it's your company, uh, to have any vision happen, there has to be a level of commitment. You've got to understand these, th these kinds of people. The critic, uh, you can have them sit there, but the less critics you have and the more people that you have committed, the better off your results are going to be. That's all I wanted to say about that. So again, it's about understanding. So the next time you're in a meeting, what I'd like you to do is just notice the types of people that you have around the table and the how, how they're interacting and see if you can shift this into something where people are in cooperation and once everybody's kind of in alignment and understands the different um, ways that people see things, you're going to have a much better result. So thank you very much. And uh, if you need to get a hold of me, if you have a comment, please put it uh, in the comments below this video. I'd love to hear some of your comments on that. And also, if you want to get a hold of me to talk about uh, some executive coaching or if you want to talk about uh, some problem you're having in your company, I certainly would be love to talk with you about that. So that's Patrick at PatrickDeanCoaching.com. You can always get a hold of me. Thanks, you guys. I want you to have a great rest of the week and just notice the different personalities you got around you. Have a great evening. And as I said, make this week the greatest week of your life so far. <laughs> Are you in that with me? Bye-bye.